Hi, my name is Hellfire. We're still counting down the days to the launch of Battlefield 2042. In the meantime, DICE have just released some more info in the form of an FAQ for their Battlefield briefing they held on June 9th. Here's a quick rundown on what we found out. Daniel Berlin, Senior Design Director, was responsible for sitting down and answering community questions about specialists, maps, vehicles and AI soldiers. They also gave details of a technical playtest and some more info regarding crossplay and cross progression functionality. Firstly, the specialists. DICE have confirmed that in addition to the four we've seen so far, namely Boris, Casper, Falk and Mackie, we will find out more about the other six later in the year. They elaborated on the specialist system, confirming that 10 specialists means 10 unique specialties and 10 unique traits. The wingsuit is given as an example and is confirmed as a specialty and will only be available on that one character. We also found out more about Falk's trait as a combat surgeon. This unique ability will allow her to revive downed players faster and to full health. At the same time, they also confirmed the return of Squad Revive, where anyone can revive a fallen squad mate, but this will take longer and only to partial health. Consider loadouts to be fully customizable outside of the unique specialties and traits of the character you've chosen, consisting of one primary weapon, one piece of equipment, one secondary weapon, and one throwable. So for example, your primary would be an M5A3 assault rifle, your piece of equipment could be a med crate, supply crate, or a rocket launcher, your secondary would be a G57 sidearm, and your throwable would be a frag grenade. They stress that Battlefield is all about player choice and freedom to play however you want. There is no limitation on squad combinations either. If you want to run four Caspers, you can run four Caspers. If you want to run three Borises and one Mackie, there is no issue, etc, etc. Another layer of customization they wanted to highlight was player skins, allowing you to alter your appearance and make your character stand out on the battlefield. During the course of this, we also found out one tidbit about a new anti-air weapon known as the FIM-33 AA missile. We have no confirmed footage of this yet, but I expect it to be an adaptation from the FIM-92 Stinger, seen here, and featured in previous games. We also found out more about the robot dog, officially known as a ranger. Despite speculation, the ranger is neither a unique specialty nor trait. They will in fact be another option under the vehicle calling system. So you would choose between a ranger and a tank, for example. They are anti-infantry and you can allocate them to scout a patrolling area or to follow and protect you. They can self-destruct when necessary and also apparently can be equipped with not C4, but the more futuristic C5 explosives. There is also more information about clustering and sectors. In previous games, the objective has always been a single flag and then move on to the next objective. Now, flags have been replaced by more elaborate and much larger sectors, consisting of multiple clustered objectives or flags. DICE say they've done this to concentrate and intensify areas of battle and minimise the amount of running between flags. Until a sector is fully secured, that objective will be considered a neutral and contested area. Some additional details they've highlighted was that skyscrapers would be limited to lobby and rooftop combat only as each skyscraper would be a map all of its own and would detract from the rest of the map. They've also stated they've been much more generous with the boundaries of the maps so that there's more room to manoeuvre whether you're on land or in the air. Between the two game modes in All Out Warfare, DICE have also said that Conquest will feature areas that aren't available in Breakthrough and vice versa. This in an effort to maximise diversity throughout the gameplay experience. Speaking of gameplay experience, they also reference the differences for cross-gen gameplay between 64 player lobbies for last gen consoles and 128 player lobbies for next gen consoles. The major difference they wanted to highlight is that there will be differences in terms of the playable area on the maps to ensure a fluid play experience. They don't state it explicitly, but it's safe to assume 64 player maps will logically be smaller. Otherwise, everything in terms of specialists, vehicles, weapons and gadgets will be available across all platforms. They also mentioned cross-progression and cross-commerce, which will hopefully smooth the transition between consoles and is available on any platform. If you start on Xbox One and move to PlayStation 5, for example, your in-game progression and purchases can still move with you. We now know that cross-play functionality is coming, but is only at a testing phase with a cross-platform technical playtest due to take place later this summer. They're still building crossplay functionality, but they have stated the final versions will be split along different console generations. 
namely Xbox One and PlayStation 4 crossplay for one, and then PC, Xbox Series S or X, and PlayStation 5 for the other, with DICE explicitly stating that PC and console can opt out from playing together. The technical playtest will be invite only and open to only a few thousand people, although you can improve your chances by updating your EA playtesting profile, which I'll link in the description below. With crossplay still in development and the gaming community still going through a generational transition, this does explain DICE's decision to introduce AI soldiers. The AI soldiers will not be specialists and they cannot use traits and specialties. They are expected to make fairly complex decisions though, such as engaging or disengaging battles, whether to flank, capture objectives or even revive down squad mates. Human players will always have priority over AI. For multiplayer, the AI is meant to make matchmaking easier and keep the lobby active. For co-op and solo, this allows you and your friends to learn the mechanics of the game without the pressure and competition of multiplayer. There is no opt-out for AI, but you should rarely see games where AI outnumber human players. If in a game you have 120 human players, this means there will be 8 AI. If another human player joins, the AI will readily make way. Finally, some updated info regarding the vehicles and the vehicle calling systems. The vehicle calling system allows you to request vehicle drops when and where you need them on a map. The system will be accessed via a tablet interface and is available to all players. There is a limited amount of call-ins dependent on the map and game mode. Once you've called in a vehicle, you will incur a cooldown, meaning everyone then has a fair chance themselves. Air vehicles such as aircrafts and helicopters will be accessed via the deploy screen. As for naval vehicles, DICE have no focus on naval specific warfare at the moment, but I have said they are listening. Some quick updates regarding vehicles. Firstly, the tank for the Russian faction, which we identified as the T-14 Armata, is actually known in game as the T-28. Also, the LATV-4 hovercraft is in fact known as the LCAA hovercraft. Finally, DICE mentioned another vehicle called the EBAA Wildcat Heavy Ground Vehicle. Now, I'd love to share a picture of this vehicle, but first, you'll have to let me find out what it is. That's everything for now. I will include the link to the FAQ in the description below so you can go through in more detail yourselves. Don't forget EA Play on the 22nd of July where we'll find out a lot more. If you have enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content. Until next time, be good to each other. We'll catch you again soon.